In this class we're going to look at motivation, or rather we're going to have a brief introduction to motivation. This is a very large topic, uh, one which pops up in all sorts of areas in business and management education, has many theories associated with it, many perspectives, many views, and can be quite difficult in parts. However, its importance should not be uh, overlooked. It is a very important topic. It ranges from the motivation of entrepreneurs who bring businesses into existence to motivation on the shop floor in, say, a manufacturing company. So motivation runs all the way through business. If people are motivated, the chances are the business will be more successful. If people are demotivated, the chances are the business is business will not be successful. So this is a very important topic and in this particular class I'm just going to run across it very gently. I'm going to talk about two, perhaps I can't remember, two or three theories. Um, again just over the top and in subsequent videos in the series we will be getting into more detail. So for the moment it's just a general overview. So the discussion topics, well, we want to deal with uh, three, I suppose. Who needs motivating? What is the process? And what are the main theories? Now, as I said, I'm not going to be able to deal with all of this in this particular video, but we can at least introduce and skirt around the, the topic. So who needs motivating? How does an individual motivate themselves and others to create and deliver a new venture? This is in the context of entrepreneurship. Uh, what is it that motivates? Is it money? Is it power? Is it social standing? Is it self self gratification that they, they feel happy amongst in themselves? I mean, what is it that drives people? Because we need entrepreneurs in the context of this particular discussion, we need entrepreneurs to create new products, otherwise we won't have anything new. We'll have the same products year in and year out. We won't have progress, we won't have innovation, change, which is what we like. So, do entrepreneurs need motivation or are they self-motivated? Big questions, big issues and not easy to even discuss, never mind solve, but it doesn't mean we can't pose the question. We can pose the question and go away and try and research to see what people, what experts are saying on it, what people are saying about it, to see if there is some insight into this. The motivation process, well, we can view that in steps. The motivational process is determining what or who needs motivation and what's to be accomplished. We can't motivate unless we know what or who. Uh, so we need to know where the effort, the motivating effort, needs to be applied. We need to assess any problems with the motivational strategy. If motivation, let's say in the workplace, is to simply pay the workers more salary or more wages and hopefully they will work harder, that may not be successful. If the working conditions are bad or arduous, people may take the extra money and have an extra day off work. It's, it's pleasant. Pleasant not to work in, in a, a noisy, dirty environment. So more salary is not necessarily the solution. So assessing the problems with motivation is it's big and it's important. And it's important to have clarity when designing a motivational scheme. Not to have distractions and not to lose focus, to concentrate on what is it that is the outcome. What is the outcome from the motivational process? What is trying to be achieved? And what sort of chances are there that the motivational forces being put into play will achieve that outcome? 
enormous questions and not easily solved subject to all sorts of debates in the literature uh, all sorts of theories being put forward to say yes and no but as I said it doesn't mean that we should not pose the questions we should pose the questions and we should see what um, what's the discussion about uh, as, as, as related to these questions well, what does the discussion say what does the literature say there are many main theories um, I could not possibly even list the main theories in this class there are many many but I suppose some are more popular than others so we'll we'll just pick out a couple to have a look at in this class but as I said in later classes we'll be much more detailed so the word motivation means behavior that is directed towards some sort of goal or objective so motivation is directed it's it's aiming at something it's aiming at an outcome if it's not it's not motivation it's it's random so generally speaking motivational behavior is associated with some sort of need or want or desire desire to have more output the need to have greater efficiency um, a person is motivated if expectations are exceeded or if they start to behave in a certain way and then can stimulate individual drive so we we like the idea as individuals of being motivated but we have expectations and if, our, if we can achieve our expectations we may be even more motivated if we have expectations that we can never achieve we'll just be endlessly frustrated and annoyed so it's a balance the operative elements in motivation well in terms of work we can identify intrinsic motivation intrinsic relates to the psychological rewards for example taking part in a challenging task if the work is challenging and interesting there is a an internal reward people feel happy motivated they're involved in something it's it's a challenge it's interesting no mention of money here no mention of anything else just they are interested in what they're doing it includes uh, responsibility uh, making the employee feel that their work is important and full and their full range of abilities are appreciated so people want to go to work they're appreciated their skills their their abilities are are recognized and that's intrinsic motivation extrinsic motivation relates to tangible rewards salary increased pay recognition promotion security it's extrinsic it can be seen it can be written down it can be looked at intrinsic it's felt on the inside it's it's what people experience from enjoying their work extrinsic is the if you like the outer manifestation of the appreciation the higher salary or recognition the promotion the the status the power the symbolism associated with the the higher status so that's extrinsic motivation let's look at one of the famous theories this one is so utterly famous it's Maslow and this crops up all over the place in uh, business and management theory Abraham Maslow saw motivation as a hierarchy of needs and not surprisingly it's known as Maslow's hierarchy of needs it's normally portrayed as a triangle if I put the cursor onto the screen for a second here we go it starts down here with very low level needs uh, needs survive basic foodstuffs we have a safety need we want to be secure not just secure in our physical lives but in our work lives as well 
We want to belong to groups. That's a higher need. Uh, we want to be recognized and valued within groups. <coughs> we want to be recognized as interesting people, special people. We have esteem. We need to be praised and looked up to and uh, acknowledged as interesting people. And the final one is when you're self actualized. I'm not too sure exactly what it means that the books have various definitions on this, but it means that you are contented, you're happy, you you have achieved everything you want to achieve. You are you're happy. Um Running it over from the books, Maslow's theory, we start with psychological needs, includes bodily needs, uh, we need food, we need sleep, we need uh, water, sex, reproduction, we need, we need all of these things, because we're humans, this is what we do. So, not much separating us out there from animals really, but we're a part of the animal kingdom in that sense, and this is what we do. Then we have safety needs, security, protection, physical. And we also want protection, safety from emotional harm. We don't want to be insulted or abused. or We want to feel protected. We have social needs, affection, friendship, acceptance. We want to belong to a group. And as I said earlier, we have esteem needs relating to the internal factors. Uh, we, we need to be recognized as good people, decent people and rewarded. And self-actualization, the drive to become something, to be, to be happy, to be content and to be recognized as, as that sort of person. Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory crops up all the time and it's something that anybody studying business and management will meet many times in their travels through the studies of various modules and various classes but um, essentially that's what it bubbles down to we'll see in other videos that these five needs may become seven needs some people have extended it and so on so we'll come back to that later another theory is by Herzberg it's quite, I'm only picking out quite famous theories here um, Herzberg's te uh, techniques of job enrichment sometimes known as vertical loading job enrichment and represents one of the most popular work models uh, which is used in organizations today so this is not just theory this is, this is what applies within the work working environment Conditions which surround the job, for example, the quality of supervision, pay, company policies, physical working conditions, job security, are all known as Hertzberg's hygiene factors. It's a slang term, but we refer to them as the hygiene factors. Pay, company policy, physical working conditions, job security, hygiene factors. And it's getting uh, motivation in a way that not just pay but the hygiene factors also are right to enable workers to participate fully in the the life of the organization and to to make a good contribution so the working environment must be nice and pleasant and secure and conducive to work um, the physical conditions must be conducive to work. The company policies must be uh, must give some sort of security to the workers and appreciate their efforts, the, recognize them. Their pay salary must be also broadly in line with other sectors or similar industries or perhaps even a bit more to reward the workers in a way that makes them feel valued. So getting the hygiene factors correct, getting the pay structure correct, according to Hertzberg, this could lead to better motivation. 
Maclellan's theory, uh, written in his seminal book, The Achieving Society, um, this hypothesis is that achievement motivation is part responsible for economic growth, and therefore it's associated with entrepreneurs. So McClellan sees this as partly entrepreneurial. Unlike Maslow and uh, unlike Maslow, I should say, McClellan took into account the individual social class backgrounds and classified individual needs under three categories. So we've moved from Maslow's five down to McClellan's three. He he groups them differently, and he said. The first one is the need for achievement. This is the, the drive to be the best. The drive to prove yourself to be the best at doing whatever it is you're doing. So that's a big need for McClelland. And there's the need for power. You need to make others behave in a way that helps to achieve the goal. The, the need for power is that it's recognition. People will look and say that person is has worked their way up. They have now got power within the organization by hard effort, by achievement. An affiliation. You've got to have close and interpersonal relationships with colleagues for recognition within the organization. Um, I suppose it's it's um, not worth having power unless it's recognized. So it's having uh, recognition from colleagues that's important. So there are three of them which are abbreviated, as I've indicated on the slide, NARC, NPOW and NAF. The, the need for achievement, the need for power and the need for affiliation. Um, Leaders mot motivating staff will to ensure that individuals are motivated uh, appropriate leadership styles to be used with each person. Leaders need to remember a few points on motivation. First of all, motivation may vary from person to person. There isn't one overarching view of motivation that applies to everybody. Uh, different people are motivated in different ways. So managers and company leaders need to recognize this and need to tailor their motivation, their motivational policies to what is more likely to be received amongst the workers. The need becomes more important if it does not fulfill satisfaction. So uh, the need must generate some satisfaction in the mind of the worker. The worker has got a need for, let's say, more pay because more pay will give the worker more satisfaction. If, if there's a, a break in the link between satisfaction and need, then it's difficult to motivate because it's difficult to know what the, the need is. And workers are complex. They may have more than one need at any one moment in time. Um, goals and objectives should be shared within the team. Um, so clarity in motivation is also important. Uh, teams, teams of workers, should be aware of what the strategy is and must somehow accept it, it must fit with their expectations it must accept that this is um, a good policy this is one that is worth working for uh, if they don't accept it then uh, the motivation will not will not follow as I said it is a complicated area it's a massive area of study. Um, I just wanted to get across a few simple uh, points about motivation in this class. I haven't 
spoken in any detail about McClelland or Maslow or anyone else. This will happen in subsequent uh, videos. But uh, for the moment, I think this is where we've got to. Uh, there's a bibliography, you may find some of the references there online, some articles associated with them. And that's really all I want to, to do in this particular video. So, thank you for watching.